Thank you. Okay. So, second part of today, uh, we'll be doing the same we did for the U, but uh, for the Z-Wave uh, protocol, okay? In this case, what changes is not the, the paradigm, not the, the way we, we control the light, because actually we are just calling an API, okay? But what changes is the API. And the API, in case of Z-Wave devices, uh, using the, the Raspberry Pi, which is uh, the one we use as a reference, it's a little bit more difficult to, to use. Okay? And it's a little bit uh, less documented. So I have here the documentation. You see it's already different because actually, uh, let me shift that if I can, oh, terrible. Okay, this is the documentation of the Z-Wave part. You can find it on uh, Z z-wave.me.com, uh, uh, okay? But anyway, you have the link on, the, on the, I think on the, on the GitHub repository, you have the link on the readme. Um, this documentation is available in form of a PDF file. And as you see, it's much more difficult to read, okay? This is almost uh, not a documentation, okay? But anyway, it's the only thing we have to understand how to interact with the, the server. And if you look at uh, this documentation, it says, okay, for accessing the functions exported as a REST service, you need to access the address of, the, of your PI at the port 8083, okay? And then the root part of the API is uh, identified by this uh, Z-Wave API resource. And then if we want to send a command, what we need to write, look here, it's really strange. It's uh, even not REST, actually. It's not uh, RESTful, at least. Uh, the URI to call is something like this. So, Z-Wave API slash run slash devices square bracket, ID of device, dot instances, square bracket, ID on the instance, and so on and so on. Okay? And this is not a real URL, right? Okay, using square brackets and whatever. But anyway, this is the REST API they, they provide, even uh, if it's not RESTful. It's quite difficult to understand, but the worst thing is that actually the devices are represented in a completely different way. So if we try to look at how a device uh, representation is, um, and we can do it just by trying to call, to perform the first call that lists all devices available, okay, because we can do it. Um, you, so the, the structure is really complex, and that structure is quite bound to the protocol, in a sense. So in Z-Wave, there are uh, some uh, features which are typical just of Z-Wave devices that are directly exposed to, exposed to the API. So for example, every device in Z-Wave has a set of, of functions. So for example, those plugs can uh, either be turned on or off, and they also measure the power consumption. and uh, they uh, compute the total, ener the total energy consumption since the, the joining of the network. Um, but every function is identified by a different instance. So in, in the case of Z-Wave, instances identify, basically identify part of a function. I'm saying part because inside an instance there are the, some objects called the common classes that actually identify uniquely what the device can do. And they have a number, and so on and so on. So uh, what changes here is that uh, the way for accessing the device is much, much more complex, and it, it, it is strongly related to the kind of protocol we are handling. So even if we want just to get the list of the devices, we need to use this kind of URI. I'm telling you the, the base URI is 
Z-Wave API slash data slash zero, and mm -hmm. this provides the list of devices, okay? And if we try to call it, we can see what we get back, okay? So let's try to do the same thing we did with the, for the U, but uh, using the Z-Wave API. So let's write here a new module. Let's call it uh, Z-Wave, or better Z-Wave, which is the name of the server. Okay, then um, let's try just to reuse some code. So, for example, base URL, in this case will be one and then two, which is the PI running the, the module. Then um, the base will not be slash API, but will be here, uh, call 8083 slash Z-Wave API uh, in uppercase. Okay, this will be the base URI. Let's also put this one. And then if you want to get the list of all devices, you can type here all devices URL uh, equal to base URL plus data slash zero. Okay, this will be the the URL that we need to call. And if we want to get back the response and try to print it, just to see what we we get back, we can type here print send. We perform a get, so we did not need to specify. We uh, do not need to specify any method. We just need to specify the URL. So all devices URL, okay. And that's it. And if we run this, okay. Uh, rest dot send within also sorry, import. Rest, and this will be rest dot send, okay? And if you try to execute it, we get this really short. Okay, I will try to. Okay, it is so short that the Eclipse console is not able to show it at all, but it shows just a, a subset. So if we go on the command line just to check what's happen, what, what happens, and we change to our script and type Python uh, zwave.py, this is what we get. Okay. Okay. And the console is ended and we, data is still not ended. Okay? Just to understand. So basically calling Z wave API slash data slash slash zero provides all the details about all the devices. In the uh, most detailed uh, possible way and uh, using specific parameters that are dependent on the protocol. So if we just try at peering inside this response, let's try to, for example, look at, I would just, okay, here, for example, you got interview done. This is a parameter which is typical of Z-Wave networks. That means that the gateway has completely interviewed the device that, and now so exactly what the device is. And this is only true for Z-Wave networks. Um, other things, for example, here, uh, devices dot seven, so the device with the, the ID seven, the seven device with the joint of the network, on the instance zero, 
on the common class of 50, which we don't know what is it, okay, but actually it, it identifies uh, a set of commands, basically. It might be on and off. Actually, the common class for on and off uh, is uh, 37. 37, okay. But there are many, many common classes defined in the Z-Wave standard, and so on. Okay, so in this really, really big set of data, what we need to extract is to uh, the information we need for controlling the lamp. Okay, and if we go back on the manual, we see that for controlling a lamp, what we need is the ID, the instance on which the on-off functionality, on-off capability is registered, the common class that in our case will be 37, okay, and once we have all this information, we can just call this URL and setting the value at 255, directly in the URL, nobody, okay? So this is another way, for, much, much more complex, okay? So um, let me just um, synthesize some information without uh, appearing uh, all in, uh, inside the manual I just give you because I already did. What we can try to do is to uh, drill down in, in this big JSON file that we get back uh, to find the instances that we, we want uh, to control. So instead of just printing, let's store the response as a dictionary. So uh, this will be all devices. Okay, and then once we get all devices, we can first try to check if we can iterate over some key. I, I'm telling to you that actually inside that file, the highest level sections are identified by keys, by device identifiers in a sense. So what we can do here is to iterate over this first set of keys. Uh, and the name of the key is devices. So what we can do here, but I'm just giving you the information directly for, uh, for the sake of time. But if you just look at the manual, everything is there. It is just a little bit more nested than in the other case. Uh, so for, uh, let's call this device in, yes, device is great. In all devices. And the devices are in, devi in the devices section. Okay. Now I'm starting to iterate. What I can do here, for example, is to try printing what I get back. So I'm trying to shrink in a little bit down the content by accessing some data inside. So let's try to print it. Okay. I would print both this and this other, and then I will check, explain why. Okay, now you see here, I print device and the content of the dictionary in uh, correspondent to the device key, okay? Because I know actually that the, the form of this dictionary is ID colon complex data. Okay? So the ID is here. You see 11, 10, 1, 5, 4, 7, 6, 9, 8. So a couple of IDs. And the corresponding data is this shorter set of information, shorter in light sense. Uh, but anyway. But what we need, we remember that we need the device ID, the instance ID, and the common class. The common class, uh, I tell you that is 37, so we need the, the device ID and the instance ID. Device ID are here, 
So if we want to try to turn on all the devices on the network, well, we already have the ideas. What we need to, to get now is the instance, okay? And since we printed the content of the response uh, uh, corresponding to the key uh, equal to the device ID, we can also understand that there is another key called the instances, and inside this key, there are the instances of the single device. So in this case, this device has uh, one instance identified by zero, and I think just one instance. There are some other devices with more than one instances. And we cannot actually detect it unless we go inside this part and try to read really, really carefully. So what we can do is it's uh, to iterate another time and try to enter the instances structure for getting uh, the instances ID. So we can do the, the same. So let's remove this printing parts and then we can type here. Iterate another one, uh, another time over instances. So for instance in all devices at the position device, so I'm uh, iterating over all the instances of a given device, in this case, uh, what we can do is, to, is try to print the instance data, only the data for each instance. And in particular, it works the same, so instance will contain the key, and if we ask for all devices, of device, of device, an instance, okay, so all these square brackets, one after the other, we will get back the instance data. So in this case, if we just print all devices, Corresponds to the key devices at the key device at the instance key. Okay, now we get the data about a single instance, and we can also print the instance ID. So print instance. Okay. So let's run another time, and you see here. Instances, okay, instances and the IDs. So there is one more piece that we need to enter into for getting the IDs, which is these instances, which is the key. So here we can iterate over all the entries another time for getting the single instances, okay? Really complex. So, uh, uh, let's try to simplify a little bit the process. Uh, for example, what we can do is to access instances here because it's the same for everyone. So in this way, I just get the inner data, okay? Because you see the key is instances, and then all the content is inside these key instances. Yes? Sorry, directly from what? Yes. Yes, you can compact the, those two four in one. Yeah, but it's more readable in this way. <laughs> okay. Yes, you could. But what I want to do now is to perform another operation, which I'm going to explain, which is basically detecting which instance I need. Because I, I cannot just tell, try to switch on all the instances. I just need one specific. That's why I'm trying to iterate over every single piece. Just, on one side to show you the, the complexity of the, <laughs> of the API, and the other side just to check uh, that specific bar. So um, let's print another time the same data, just to see that in this case I'm uh, getting exactly um, the instance data. OK. 
Okay. Okay. This is the data for each instance inside the device. In particular, you see he, here the device one has many instances. Finally, we get it. Oh, too much. Okay. So device one has the instance 11, 10, 13, 12, 15, 14, 16, and so on. Many instances. The device five is only the instance zero, and also device four, device seven, device six, device nine, device eight. So when I think I can tell you already is that the gateway, so the, the Raspberry module, which is on uh, plug it on the Raspberry Pi, which is there, uh, is the node one, which is the one that has most instances, okay? Because in every Z-Wave network, and that is specified in the Z-Wave uh, uh, description, protocol description, the first node is the gateway. Okay. Then all the other nodes, all the other nodes are nodes inside the network, but still we don't know what kind of nodes they are. In particular, this network here is composed by those two plugs, par, uh, plus other three plugs which are in my office, plus other three sensors. They are quadrupole sensors measuring humidity, light, uh, temperature, uh, and uh, movement. Okay. So we have a couple of instances of which some corresponds to a plug, some other correspond to a sensor. And we cannot turn on a sensor, okay? Because the sensor, once the battery are there, it's on always, at least for this kind of sensor. Um, and instead we need to detect if the device we are looking at is a, a switch or not. How can we do that? What we can do is to uh, check the common classes that the plug has or that the sensor has. Each device in Z-Wave has a set of common classes which identify what kind of function the device provides. So we need to perform one more check and checking if inside these instances there is one instance which inside has between all the common classes the one corresponding to the uh, switch binary, it's the real name, uh, that we use for turning on and off the plug, okay? So, if we need to do that in code, we need to, here, let's write comment, check for uh, switch binary, sorry, for the switch binary class, command class, which is 37, okay? And then, let me copy, because it's long, okay? Um, you need to get this part here, so all devices of instances. Instance, then inside the instance, there are a couple of keys, of which one is command classes, common classes, okay, and if we get the keys for this substructure, we can check if inside the set of these keys there is the common class number 37. So what we can do here is to type if this really big common. Oh, let me write it in a Pythonic way. So if 37, which is the common class, is inside the set of keys of all common classes of the current instance of the current device, okay, this is the instruction. If we got this common class, then, oh yeah, finally we got it. This is a plug. So we can write down, just for debugging, this is a switch. This is something that can be switched. And then we can try to turn it on. Okay? So let me go to the end. 
column. Did I write everything right? Okay. Then let's just write here a comment, debug, print this device. So the device, uh, let's print the ID. We know the ID because the ID is device. Is a switch, and here we put a device, okay? And then, once we print out that, that, that this is a switch, we can try to turn it on. So, prepare the URL to call. In this case, we just need to perform a get, because this is the protocol they defined, okay? So, uh, uh, let's prepare the URL. Switch on URL, switch on URL will be the base URL, okay, plus, we remember that it was run and then that long string identified basically the same data structure we use here. So it, it will be run slash um, devices, and here I'm just copying because it's really too long for remembering. Um, he inside the devices, we need to provide the ID of the devices, so here will be plus uh, device, plus, okay, dot instances, instance dot command classes and we know that the command class is 37 okay dot let me check the manual because I don't remember here but it should be okay command classes set 255 Okay, so set 255. Okay, and that's it. Then we can just try to send this big URL and cross the finger <laughs> for everything working. So rest dot send URL equal to switch on URL. Okay. Let's save this. Let's try to run. And we got it. And you see here that device four, five, uh, five, four, seven, six, and eight are switches. So they are devices for which one of the available functions is switching on and off. This doesn't imply that the device is a switch. The, the device can be a plug, it can be a lamp holder, it, it can be whatever, but all these devices have the common class for switching on and off. Okay, so it's a little bit different from the case before, because in the case before we know that the device was a lamp. In this case we don't know anything about the device, we only know that the device can be turned on or off. Okay, what if we want to switch it off? The same, just as said, we need to set uh, the value at zero instead of 255. So let's copy everything. Okay. Let's sleep for 10 seconds. Oh, sorry. And Let's change the URL to put zero instead of 200. Okay, let me check for errors. Time, we need to import the time module. Okay, that's it. So this, was, this is our long script, because basically we need to, to dive inside the data structure. The principle is the same. But 
okay. Turning on, they were already on. Yeah. Okay. So, what we did is to basically create the same script, okay, just for turning on lamps. In one case with the U bridge, in the other case with the Z wave protocol. Okay. So what we need to reason about now is to try to figure out what happens if we switch to another protocol. What do you think? Okay. So another protocol means reading another manual and probably sending other data, which is organized in different way, which is different nouns, uh, which is different paradigms. Maybe I need to put some uh, different body inside the request or I need to use some different verb. But the problem is that Basically, what I want to do is to t turn on a lamp and nothing else, okay? So if you try to scale this to a general environment, this will be a really, really difficult to realize because if you have a big environment with many technologies inside, what happens is that you need to uh, address every single peculiarity of every single technology for doing the same thing. Even in this case, which is really, really simple, just turning on and off lamps, just on two protocols, we needed to write completely different code, basically. And un to understand the each protocol issue, okay, where the second one was partially mediated by me because I already know it. If we, if we needed to start from scratch, this would be much more difficult, okay? because we need to check it, experiment, uh, understand why it's not working, and so on. And this should be multiplied for every new protocol, okay? So that's why for this course we are also offering you the possibility to use our gateway. It's not just uh, for, for uh, providing, uh, you know, a kind of marketing or uh, something like that. Uh, it's to help you avoiding this problem. So the idea, the basis of the, the gateway that the professor uh, described to you, I think two lessons ago, is to help developers to avoid doing these kind of things every time they need to encode a very simple application, okay? So every time I need to turn on lamp, I need to understand the protocol in this case. But if I have something which might be the log gateway, or what else, another gateway. If I have a software, a middleware, they call it, which stands in between me as an application developer, so the applications, and on the other side, the, the field, uh, with the protocols, uh, issues, and whatever, then all the development work will be much easier. Because if I have something which abstracts the lower part into a single protocol, on the upper side, then I just need to learn one documentation, to learn one language, and then the middleware takes care of converting the single language into every specific protocol, okay? So what if we want to turn on the lights using our gateway, which may be replaced by any other gateway offering the same functionalities in principle, okay? We, we have this for free, so that, that's why we use it, we are using it, but it's not the only one. So let me switch back uh, to the public network, just for, okay. Um, and if we go on page and we have a look at the API. Now, what if we want to turn on a device, a lamp? Because that's the point, okay? At this moment. So, commands, okay. Well, the documentation is a little bit better than the Z-Wave one. It's, it is more similar with the, uh, with the U-Bridge documentation in a sense. Because this is a REST and the other is not REST. Okay, but 
verb that we need to use, put. Okay. This is basically uh, because commands in REST are used, are represented as update of states of resources. Okay, so updating means using a put request. Um, what we need to provide is basically it's the common name and an optional body. So what if we want to turn the lamps on? We need to call, okay, the URL of the gateway, slash devices, slash ID of the device, commands, common name, okay? And, that's turn, and that turns the lamp on, independently from the network, okay? So if now I try to send the same command to dog, I should be able to turn the Z-Wave lamps, for example, by using this much simpler notation. So let's try. I didn't try this at office, so it might not work. <laughs> okay? But so if I write here a new module and call it dog in our case, the main, okay, the base URL. So let's use the same structure. Uh, the base URL is almost the same because we are talking to a software which is running on the PI, hopefully. Okay, but this is running on the port 8080 slash API slash version one. Okay. This is the base URL. Then, what if I want to get back all the devices to do the same, exactly the same operation we did before? Well, I need to check in the documentation, uh, which is here. Look for the devices. And I need to call a get on the, can you read it or should I enlarge it? Okay, uh, a get on the gateway address slash API slash v1 slash devices. Oh, much easier, okay? It's m much more light uh, device slash API slash lights. Okay, but in this case it's devices because there are also other devices, not only uh, lights. So here, what I need to do is to, let's copy this. Okay, uh, let's call this devices URL equal to base URL plus devices and Let's send a request and see what happens. So um, all devices equal to rest dot send URL equal to devices underscore URL. Okay. And then let's also specify Okay, an accepted response back. Because as you see here in the documentation, we can either get back JSON or XML. So if I don't specify anything, let's try. Okay, I need to import also the rest module. And if now I just print all devices, Okay, I run this as an Okay. 
I get nothing back. The program is locked. Let, let's check if the gateway is running. Okay. Uh, okay, I, I cannot get it, and I don't know why, because actually I'm not on the same network, so let me switch back. Um, okay. Let's try another time. Yes, that's fine. I didn't specify any code. Our REST client is really simple. It assumes that the content provided back is JSON. In this case, it's not JSON. So I got an error on decoding. Okay? So when I try to convert the string into JSON, into a dictionary, I cannot do it because it's not a JSON file. So what I need to do is to specify as it's required here the accept header okay and the accept should be application json so let's try to write it here um. Okay, and run it another time. Okay, accept is not. Okay, sorry, this will be headers equal. Yes, and we got the response back. Because now I'm telling to the gateway, I want to get back a JSON description. Okay. And you see here the description, it, it is a little bit more readable than the other one. Let's look at the description in the command line so that we can compare it. Okay, so let's type here Python um, dog. Okay, it's a, it is still long. Okay, many data inside. Oh, sorry, but. Um, Um, but not so long. But you can see here that the information is quite easy to read. If you just try to read the inside, we have devices, okay. First, this is just an array of devices. We have no IDs inside at this moment. And then we have description, the gateway. Wow. First line, we already know which device is the gateway. Then, this gateway is Z-Wave. Commands, which, which kind of command I can send to the gateway? It's there, commands, associate command, and the real command name is associate, so I can just type slash API slash version one slash devices slash the ID, which is, I can show you. Uh, it's not here, it's a Z-Wave gateway in any case. Um, slash commands slash associate and the gateway will start associating a new device, and so on. So I need to interpret this, which is still much more complex than the bridge one, okay? But of course, with this, I can wrap almost all, I'm, I'm saying almost all, but it's a rather optimistic view. But anyway, many different networks with many different aspects. So it's obvious that the description is a little bit more complex because we don't have only lights, we, we can have uh, uh, whatever connected to the gateway, maybe sensor, maybe meters, maybe uh, doors, uh, detectors, door opening detector, and so on. Okay, so it's a little bit more complex, but we can try to dive in and get the same information. So, what if we want to check for lamps or plugs in our case? Well, what we need to do is to find here how a plug is described. Okay and get its ID back. And you can see here, um, okay, so this one was the ID, you see here, ID is at the gateway. And then here starts another description to say, okay, what, the, what is it 
this, this device. It's a new device of type metering power outlet and has a class metering power outlet. So I just need to search for all the entries for which the class is metering power outlet. I need to get the ID. And once I have the, the ID, I can just call the turn on command that in this case is already here. And the on command is, OK, on command, uh, real command name, value on. Okay. So if I want to write the same code, what I need to do is to either it over all devices. So for device in all devices, OK? If device. Okay, then I can print this is a plug. Yes, I forgot the column here. Better. This will be device ID. Okay, let's try if it works. It's just written from scratch now. So maybe it doesn't work. Okay, string in this is my B. What? Okay, it, uh, the all devices of device. Okay, list indices. Let me check because I'm just typing from scratch. So uh, the response was devices. OK. Then description. I got back, I got an array here. OK. So this is an array. Then. Let's try in the same way as before, just because I, I, I try to skip some passage. Devices of device. Uh, sorry, OK. Then, remote system class Okay. Okay. 
See here now, I'm just getting the first one. Uh, so description, that wave, control functionalities. And then, uh, at the end, I should have class, okay? So if I type here, class oh sorry okay said way gateway now I got the class of the first then I should be incremented but it's not incremented This should be incremented, but let me just check here. One thing. Okay, so it was not i equal to zero. i equal i plus one. Just print i. Why is that? it is citing? Yeah, probably yes. Probably yes. Because probably I would need to do this if we want to get it. And here I can type this. Oh, yeah, I cannot. Uh, no, sorry. That would be zero, probably. Okay. <coughs> okay. <laughs> this shows that I, I wasn't testing this before, but let me just print one more time. Um, okay. Also device, just to check what device is, so that maybe we can come back a little bit the request. Just debugging. Okay, you see the first is devices, so I need to enter inside. So, or devices. I can just write. And show about type dictionary. So this is a dictionary. So if I just type two and class key error two. Okay. Let me go back. Four. Um, Q. 
dictionary. Okay. Sorry, I'm just debugging because actually it was this is the first time I run it. So it's a nishable type dictionary. So this is a dictionary. Okay. really strange. Okay, I need to check it. <laughs> Sorry. Um, this should be let me check back. Devices and make them power outlet. Okay, so here for Yeah, okay, now we got it. Just uh, learning how to iterate on it. So I'm just printing the device class and then I can also print the device ID. Oh, let me check, just type here device. Okay, and This will be um, ID. Okay. Finally, I make it working, and now we get uh, the type and the ID. Okay. So type Z Wave Gateway, ID Z Wave Gateway. You see, it's a, a readable ID. It's not a numeric ID, it's a string. Now, we can get this information for turning on the uh, the plugs. So here we can type if um, let's call it this uh, the class. So device class it's and let's keep it printing. Keep printing. So print device class. And the same for ID, so device ID here is equal to, and we print it. Okay, still keep printing, and here we say if device class is equal to maze power outlet, okay. Then turn it on. So um, let me do this. Um, turn it on means uh, that uh, on URL will be 
this URL. Okay. Plus devices slash plus the device ID plus slash commands on. Okay. And what we need to do here is to perform a put on this URL. So rest.send, this will be put, okay. Then on URL, the body, which in our case can just be an empty body, and the same editor as before, just so not this one, but the content type uh, that we use for the U. Okay. And if everything is okay, might be it works. Let's just print also the URL because I, maybe I just. Power outlet. Oh, sorry, metering. Okay. Yeah. You see here, I got an error because in this case, we get back no response. Okay. So when I try to decode, no JSON object could be detected in this case, could be decoded. So now I send the command, hopefully, first command. Let's check if it works. Uh, if, if, it, if it's in the right format. Devices, device ID, commands, command name. So let's say API, V1, devices. Device ID, okay, commands, command name. So it's in the right format, but uh, the send fails because here. So default, Sephora decode, no JSON, on the decoding. So maybe we can just change this a, li a little bit and handle all. all also this part. So if uh, result uh, as string um, I think it's empty so probably exactly that's why I think that decode return default decoder dot decode might be that one. So Let's print it. And run a dog another one, another time. Okay, this is the first request. Okay, the second request is nothing, you see here. So if it's empty, we can just, if a result as a string, Ah, sorry, I, I wrote the one, the wrong one. Okay, 
you see the nav works because I just modified the client to ignore empty responses, okay? But given that developing this part of the color required a little bit more than in the others because we were developing from scratch. On the other, I was using a trick because actually I, already, I was already uh, using a code that I, I was developing in my office and here it was just developing from scratch. But if you look at this part, it's quite easy. And the most important thing is that this works independently from the network. So this will be the same operation done for every network which is connected to the gateway, okay? So if I have a device which is a metering plug on ZB, well, it's exactly the same. And for me, there is no difference. See, here I even don't check the kind of network to which the device is connected, even if I know it, okay? So the difference here, uh, with respect to the previous case, apart from on the, uh, on the speed of developing because of the, this scratch development, um, is that while in the first cases I need to develop a different code for each different network, so if I wrote, write an application, for example, one of your projects where I need to change the lights, uh, detect some presence or uh, whatever, if I write the application using the first approach, I need to change the application modules that uh, interact with the low-level networks every time I change devices. So either I bound the application to one single network and I have no problems in that case, or I will have to do much work for adapting my application every time a new network appears. On the other hand, if I use a middleware in between, I'm not saying this middleware, whatever middleware provides the functionality of abstracting low level to an higher level uh, protocol, my application is developed just once. And then it's the middleware that takes care of uh, performing the translation. And all the network issues are confined to the middleware. That's the main difference. Okay, so we can start for today. If you have any questions, just ask me. Uh, next time we will try to learn a, a bit more on, uh, on, uh, on the gateway and uh, on how to use the gateway on also different networks. Today we just see, uh, we just have seen uh, for the Z-Wave case because the U is still not integrated inside the gateway. That's why I was not lighting up both the U and the other. But uh, next time we will use different networks just to see the difference. Okay? Okay, also this code would be on GitHub. Of course, uh, now uh, it's not available because I still need to commit it. And, and that's it. See you on Monday.